This 900 pound crate showed up in my driveway, and not only did I have to figure out how to open it, but I had to figure out how to get the 20 inch planer that was inside of it about three inches from the pallet to the cement of my driveway. Needless to say, I used several principles of Euclid, geometry, levers, and ramps. But uh, once I detached it from the pallet, got the pallet out of the way, and then was able to move my cars out of the way so I could wheel it into the garage, well, it was all about cosmoline removal at that point. So grab a toothbrush, grab your favorite solvent, put on a mask if necessary, and I spent probably about a day removing cosmoline from this thing. Grizzly takes rust prevention very seriously. With that done, I can move it into its final home up near the garage door and begin the assembly, putting in the set screws on the bottom of the extension wings. And then I set the extension wing on a stool and then just lowered the base down so that I could line up the bolts hands-free and not having to balance this heavy cast iron wing while threading bolts through. It made it a lot easier. From there, I just wanted to get it somewhat snug so that it held on its own without support underneath it. And then I had to go about getting it flush and getting everything level. So I got it relatively flush, brought in my four foot straight edge, and you can see it's quite a bit out of level. And that's what these set screws on the bottom are for. As you push them in, it pushes the ends of the tables up and it gets it nice and level. Once you've got it exactly where you need it, then you can fully snug up the bolts and set the tables where they belong. I'm going to check to make sure they're perfectly level, and then I will repeat that whole process on the other side, and then again in the middle. Really, once the first one was set, the other two went very quickly. Now it's time to deal with the bed rollers. This little guy is called a rotocator, and I actually bought this from Grizzly, and it's basically a magnetic-based dial indicator. I dropped these feed rollers down below the surface so that I could get the beds and extension wings level. Now I just want to check to make sure that these are raised two thousandths of an inch above the table and they are of course parallel to the surface. The height is adjusted using this eccentric knob on the side. Essentially once you release the set screw you can twist that eccentric knob and just monitor the dial indicator to get it exactly where you want it. Again I set mine two thousandths of an inch above. Now I'm gonna give it a good waxing to prevent rust on the extension wings. Using some Renaissance wax, I uh, rubbed it on, let it dry for about five, 10 minutes, and then came back and buffed it nice and smooth. So protected from rust and clean. So now I wanna go back to the actual shop construction. I'm jointing the edge of some cherry cat molding and just sawing it to the exact length. I cut scarf joints on the end of some of the pieces and then I just ended up going with butt joints and a few of the other more difficult pieces. But I also had to notch it out several places along the way for electrical cords and various and sundry things that popped up around the shop. So that was pretty easy, just a couple of cross cuts and then chopping to pop the waist out and then some final pairing right to the line to get a nice clean fit around electrical cords. Now. I got to put my new planer to the test. This uh, cherry molding was actually very, very dirty. It had been lying around the lumber yard for a long time. It had already been surfaced. And I just needed to do a quick skip planing to remove some of the gunk and get a nice clean surface. So it was a nice test run of my planer. Now I just want to break the edges here. I'm ended up putting just a, a slight round over on the bottom and a little round over on the top and just did that by slightly changing the angle of my chamfer so it's a round over maybe it's a faceted round over but ended up being exactly what i needed to give me that nice soft feel on the edge of my cat rail now it's just a matter of installing it all the way around so a little bit of pre-drill with pilot holes and then i used tremont nail cut nails to install it all the way around the shop. Now, it's time to start moving stuff back into place.
Well, folks, this is it. There's certainly some odds and ends that need to be taken care of before I can truly call it moved in. Uh, first and foremost, I need to bring in my new barns lathe and put it right there under the window and find a place to put my treadle lathe. But if you saw my blog post earlier last week, this is my new machine room. You can see how the planer fits nicely up against the wall, dust collections right there, and I've got all of this space that I can move the planer around in order to use it. I've got just a current project lumber rack up top, and in fact, the stuff on the very top shelf there is just random scraps from the cherry cap molding I was putting in. Below it, you can see walnut, 10, actually 11 quarter walnut for a dining table that I'm about to start. And there's some more of it against the wall there for the legs. But my frame saws, buck saw, everything are right here on the wall. And I've got complete cherry cap molding all the way along the wall on three walls of the shop. It runs all the way around. So certainly, that's probably going to be a catch-all to grab random things that I can set there. But I also think it'll be really useful while I'm working on projects to have just that little ledge to set things. For instance, up here in, for lack of a better term, my drilling corner, I've got my two drill indexes and my Forstner bits, which I use with the post drill just sitting right there on the ledge. Now, in my earlier blog post, I talked about where I was going to position my saw bench. And I had originally talked about moving it where my sharpening bench is now. But it occurred to me, if I set it over here in this corner, first of all, my saw bench fit perfectly around the sump pump and the battery backup. My saw bench nestles really nicely here. And this gives me this full run of the shop to be able to rip or cross cut long pieces. At the same time, that full length allows me to plane through the 20 inch planer really long pieces, either by opening the garage door or just moving the planer up and running all the way along this section. Really, really useful. So I went ahead and I put the saw till right up there on the wall. So the saws and everything are right where they need to be with the saw bents and the saw bench. Joiner and bench now along the back wall. This piece of plywood you see sitting here is actually going to be mounted up on the wall. And um, just because I, I don't have the stud placement that I want next to this window. And I'll be building a carving cabinet there for all of my carving chisels. Right now they're actually down here under the joint intervention rolls. And uh, that'll be a build coming soon. Of course you may remember this soffit here that I built. It's now the perfect place to hold my clamps and some various and sundry things. I've got a, a Stanley 45 and a plow plane that don't have a home yet. Here is the heart of the shop. Here's my tool cabinet with pretty much all of my hand tools and the bench still stays right in the middle. Sharpening station, I think I'm gonna keep right over here, although I am going to rebuild it and make something a little bit more streamlined. Um, that's the perfect place to be sharpening because I can work right here at the bench, turn around, sharpen, and then come right back to work at the bench. My spring pole lathe still lives up here in the front of the shop. It's a perfect place for it. I, I like to move it out into the driveway so I can open the garage door and just slide it right on out there. This cabinet in the corner has actually been filled with a lot of the stuff that was in the Rubbermaid containers. I've got all my glue, high glue, various glues, some sandpaper, all my finishing materials on the second shelf. I've got some turning materials, a couple chair making tools and then some just miscellaneous paint and a little bit of leftover stuff as well as my Erlex sprayer down at the bottom. It looks like kind of a mess, but this whole cabinet used to be just finishing. So it's a lot more useful now. I've got my shop patterns and things just stuck out of the way here. And that is the shop. Like I said, a few more little things that need to be done here and there, but I am really psyched with it and look at how much more space I have now.